welcome to the MBS show. I'm your host, Fafis Marsh. Joining me today is Norman. Hello, and welcome to episode 200. Woo! Throw the confetti Ow. everywhere. Yay. Confetti. Confetti, indeed. Actually, hang on, I have some wacky string here. I'll just actually fire it. Give me a sec. What? <laughs> oh, good lord. That actually fired. <laughs> Oh, it's nice, but oh, good lord, it's stuck to me. Can you give me a sec? <laughs> oh, right, you did. Too much information. Uh, so, how are you, Norman? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, what's it here, Kyle? Yes, Puffy. How can I help you? Yay! You're, you're the <laughs> sexy co-host. I totally <laughs> can screw up. No. No, no. It's I'm literally covered in in. in um, what, what's it called? Wacky strings. So I'm just like I'm kind of tangled up in it at the moment. So I'm just trying to find a way to <laughs> detach it from my finger. Oh wow! Which I, I mean, I mean, I can't explain to you, but like, there's a, it's like a rope of it, and it's hooked around my left, my um, my ring finger, going all the way down. And I kid you not, it's about the size of the laptop screen, which gives you an idea of how big this thing is. Oh, wow. And I'm trying to, and the problem is, I'm trying to reach the bin. The bin is just far enough out of reach that I cannot actually reach it from here. Oh, maybe you should Aww. just wing it. <laughs> Let me try. Hang on. Oh no, it dropped. <laughs> wow. There um, we go. Isn't I've cleaned up. Called, uh, silly string in America. Yeah, I think it is silly string or wacky string. Uh, you know, some way of rebranding it for the American market. I got no yeah. idea what's that thing. Let me Google it. It's basically a aerosol can, and when you fire it, it it fires out a sort of condensed. Um, oh, foam string. Oh, that one, those things, the Spider-Man thing. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Spider-Man things. <laughs> Look at me, Mom, I'm a Spider-Man! Yeah, they, they sold those <laughs> things before. They give you a glove, and that glove has a trigger point where it shoots the confetti strings, and you load it up with the aerosol can, and you shoot it like Spider-Man, and it shoots up web, or like the string, so it makes you look like Spider-Man. That is the most stupidest thing ever not that it's not cool it, i would that's not a word love to play with it <clears throat> i just understood that i screwed up never mind <laughs> never mind that's this not a word <laughs> yeah but the thing is is that with the spider-man glove it's such a pain to to clean it up why why would you buy it it's a toy it's a toy but yeah, I mean, we're kind of glancing over the fact that this is episode 200 and you're hosting Puffy. Yeah. That's from it. Abandoned ship. That's from it. Abandoned ship. You, you said you want to take over, so yes, as promised. And now she's I... got control of it, she doesn't want it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's a for, for How dare you sake. make this bad show? How dare you? A I am joke. so disappointed. I but totally it, haven't listened to the, to the show over a year now. No. <laughs> oh, goodness sake. Puffy, Puffy, you disappoint me. You, we were meant to hijack this, and instead you've just kind of gone, oh, we've got control of the ship. Uh, can we put an autopilot? <laughs> is, there, is, there like, is there something we can do about this? Do we have to steer it? I don't know. I just wanted to, I just, I, You just wanted the captain's quarters. That's what you wanted. You wanted the fancy hat seeing captain. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, goodness sake. But yes, it is episode 200, isn't it lovely? Yes, isn't it lovely? Like, we've been working on this show for 200 weeks now. Is it? 200 weeks? That's how you count it, right? Yeah, for 200 weeks. I mean, yeah. 200 episodes. You've done it weekly. That would, yeah, 200 weeks. Wow. And just, and yeah, stones throw away from four years. What? Really? Four years? Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, think about it. 50. 51, 52 weeks in a year, uh-huh. times it by four. So you're only a couple of episodes away from saying you've got a four-year anniversary. So you get to have two of these at once. Oh, wow. So you could say that this is the practice hijack episode for when Puffy, Puffy comes on for the four-year anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Norman. Yes. I just remembered something. What? You do remember about a hundred-ish episodes back. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were meant to make a Dan, uh, Daniel appreciation day. Let's make it today. So what day it is today? Today is the 30th of January. 
Yeah, but Puff, uh, that appreciation day was done on the Friendship Express. Everybody enjoyed that convention and everybody was appreciative of him. So, let's make it official on the show. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That, that's how you, that's how you host it. Yes, definitely. I, I'm sorry. I don't have like 199 episode, uh, experience of hosting the show. <laughs> no problem. I'm here to guide you. <laughs> uh, why am I helping you take over the show again? <laughs> I have no idea, to be honest. But still, but still. So, Puff, you've been listening to this episode for a while now. So, what do you think of the show? Um, first of all, I, I've been listening to this, uh, to this episode just because I'm in the call, you know? <laughs> <clears throat> you derps. You still derp. I'm not saying. That is, that, that is one thing I know about the show. You derp a lot. <laughs> Uh, and oh boy, how I miss the bloopers. Well, the bloopers, they're... Mm, I, okay, for people who don't know, sometimes at every end of the show, there's a blooper. But somehow things seems to... Well, some shows, they don't they mix well into the show. So SweetieBot didn't need to cut them out. And yeah, sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. And if things taken out of context is much funnier, then she'll do it. But as for now, we'll see if this episode has bloopers or not because, oh boy howdy, <laughs> bloopers are needed to in this episode. Huh, I wonder why. <laughs> we, will, we will wonder why because when the public see this, it's going to be an awesomely edited sequence that will look fantastic. I mean, Puffy, you will look almost human by the time this has been edited. <laughs> Wait, she's not human? Wait. <laughs> Wait. How did you know? That I'm secretly a seagull. I thought you were a penguin. Well, the reason I the reason I know that is because I have to interview you in a couple of days, and I've got to research you. So of course I looked up, and it's like, oh, she's a seagull. All right. <laughs> Wait, I thought it was like a penguin. Yeah, the the thing is, is that my grandpa was a penguin, uh, and I go down to the seagull tree. Uh, it uh, this story ended up because basically Lurker Cat, who was on episode one hundred. Something. <laughs> I literally had I'm... it a second ago. Oh, it's um, episode 172, I think. Yeah, um, 172 or somewhere around there. Uh, where my voice was, uh, <laughs> uh, very, very Scottish and, um, yeah. Yeah, I remember that episode. That episode was interesting. Oh, yeah, no, your, your Scottish voice was absolutely fantastic. I, I remember hearing it and I just thought, you know what? That is a guy I could get along with very well. I mean, just that voice, the charm, the the insight they were offering. I mean, you know, it was fantastic, Puffy. I mean, it was an absolute, uh, it was brilliant to hear your Scottish dulcet tones. <laughs> um, Just a warning for everyone else. Please don't put a mirror in front of him. Uh. No, seriously, John, and there have been times where I've put on the camera on my Skype and I have actually spent a couple of hours just talking to myself. You know, I spent more time talking to myself than I do to most humans. Well, it is a good <laughs> distraction if you want to escape from the Kyle. It is indeed. If you can find a way to turn on my own camera, I mean, I'll actually just spend ages <laughs> talking to myself about random things, which is great because I just pretend I'm interviewing myself, which is just hilarious. It's like, hello, and today on Midnight Scribe's Creative Vibes, we have Midnight Scribe. Midnight Scribe, how are you doing? Oh, I tell you what, it's such an honour to be on the show. Oh, wow. How are you, Midnight Scribe? Oh, I'm pretty good. It's nice to have someone as nice and as suave as you want. Oh, shucks. Now you're just, you're just, <laughs> I can't believe it. you're so oh, kind wow. to me. But anyway, Kyle, since you're new <laughs> to the show, um, how has it been, like, your experience with us? Well, I mean, it's been great. I mean, obviously, I've been, you know, permanent for the last couple of episodes, but it feels odd, because, like, the first episode I did was, I believe, 168. Yeah, well, I remember that episode well. It was... Yes. Yeah. How to put this? It was one of those episodes where, hey, we don't have a guest. Oh, Sugar Duff was there. Oh, um, there's this guy named Kyle. Can he be on? Sure, why not? <laughs> yeah, I know. I it was, that. Yeah, it was like, because uh, you'd invited her on for the show or something. I, was, I just happened to be around at hers on the same day. And because we, you know, obviously we kind of work in the high on Bronies together, it's like, oh, hey, Norman, bring him on, you know, and I'm just like, it's fine, you know. 
and like obviously her just trying to look out for me and whatnot. And to think that that one invitation has then spiraled into being a part of this show and doing creative vibes and everything else. It's been, it's kind of <laughs> odd to look back on it because that was back at the um, beginning of June when that happened. Yeah. Or, or, or was it actually May? I think uh, late May or beginning of June. I, just the hardware, like the hardware gets me every time. Oh, of course, um... yeah, the improvised microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you, if you haven't watched the episode, I'm not sure if we mentioned it when we did it, but, um, because I was around at Sugar Doves and she had her headset, um, we had another microphone we could use, which was, um, on a stand that the, um, the top of the stand didn't accommodate the microphone. There was like some sort of issue with it. I can't remember precisely what. So the only way we could keep the microphone still enough for me to use it, because I couldn't hold it in my hand because it kept bumping everywhere, was we had to gaffer tape it on. <laughs> Uh, and I'm not talking. A, I'm not talking a tiny amount of gaffer tape. I'm talking like I'm really getting in there, wrapping round. <laughs> um, and we will learn, uh, we will put the episode in the show notes down below. If you want to check out the episode, the first episode that Kyle was on, um, I personally was on. Uh, my first episode was 142 or five. I don't remember, but yeah. it was a Christmas special. That episode was fun all around just because of well okay first we had me james silver quill and you and i was thinking about hey uh maybe we shouldn't do an episode like uh let's, let's just put this in let's just say it's a christmas holiday and stuff like you said no we should do something we should really do something like we gotta do something and you know what i said okay let me try and get the people around so we got the silver quill, we got James and stuff. And then... And Ro. You forgot about Ro. Yeah, How Ro. dare you. It's, it's not that I forgot about him. It's just that he's quiet. Yeah, he was uh, kind of quiet uh, yeah. in the episode. That's why I I drew him drawing a pizza or something. <laughs> yeah. But still, I, I did remember the episode well. And the first... um, Not a word was from you. <laughs> Which was Shut mm. up, I know. <laughs> uh, which you're not gonna fine. let you're not gonna let me live this down now, will you? Oh no, I um, was expecting it from James, but not you. Ah, <laughs> uh, thanks. But the first episode I was mentioned on was one hundred uh, around one hundred twenties, uh I do know that. And um uh so I have a question for Kyle. Kyle, um you said uh, that you joined the uh the MBS show June ish. I remember it was June. So, how did the idea of Midnight Scribes come from? Did uh, did the show influence you in any way? Uh, oh, good question. Um, I'm trying to remember now because um, that that kind of period is, is all a bit of a blur. Because at the same time, I was um, reaching the end of a work contract and all sorts of things. There was a variety of things going on at the same time. I'm pretty sure there would have been some sort of um, influence in the sense of you know, Norman and the gang do a great show, it would be great if we could do something similar for ours, maybe. Uh, Sugar Dove was the one who came up with the actual original concept and brought me on to kind of uh, be the, the voice of the, the show. So um, it's possible, I mean, you'd have to ask her to see precisely what she was thinking at that point, because um, it moved so fast that um, we couldn't even, you know, we kind of end up further ahead than we ever realized before we realized we were there you know it's like because when we you know we did you know i did the nbs show you know for the first couple of guest appearances started working in creative vibes and then before i knew what happened we recorded so much of creative vibes that we had to plan for a second season which is like that, that what <laughs> that was not planned that's not meant to happen uh joining this show makes you do crazy things i'll tell you what i've got a question for you norman because um I am, um, I mean, I know we've kind of discussed about this, uh, you know, in our off time, but obviously the show has been going on for near enough four years, 200 episodes, and you've gone through quite, um, a variety of hosts, you know, from the original, from when you originally started, when it was, you know, uh, MBS and Malaysian mm-hmm. Brony Show or whatever. Was it Malaysian Brony Show? Yeah, <laughs> it was. Let's go, let's go with that. It, it was because, um, fun fact, episode 11 or 12, was the episode where Norman was the guest himself. Ay, ay, ay. Wait, so hang on, were you... Sorry, this is where suddenly I'm showing up ignorance and I have to find out, hang on, you were the guest in episode 11. Were you not an original host? 
I was. He was. Oh, you were? Oh, phew. I was always saying, like, did you hijack the show <laughs> from someone else? <laughs> I was always saying, that's epic. Hijacked <laughs> I, I genuinely Still thought for a second. through all of the years. I really thought that Norman had hijacked it early on and that you were about to hijack it next, Puffy, and it was going to be some sort of strange sequence thing. Because <laughs> the uh, thing Kyle, is, you're forgetting about yourself hijacking the show. <laughs> and I'm Diane. Oh, well, we kind of hijacked it for like 10 minutes. It was like, you know, we're, we're, we did counts. it in a very Scottish way. But, Still counts. But the question, yeah, but yeah, here was something else I wanted to ask, because like, you've gone through quite a few hosts in that time, and like, I, obviously, um, having different people on kind of changes the, the dynamic of the show. I mean, um, how do you think it's changed from like, when you did the earlier episodes where you're different hosts, to the show it kind of is now? Hmm. Well, the way I look at it is, with different people coming on board, it brings in a different dynamic to the show. For myself, I'm the static guy who doesn't like to change, but bringing people in and talking to them and knowing how they work gives me that feeling of, oh, I should change it for this person so I know how it works. So as many people come and go, the show kind of been influenced by their appearances. And one of the few changes that we had to the show was with James and King, where they mentioned that, hey, uh, the segue on the show was pretty bad with, uh, let's move on to the next topic and whatnot. So that was kind of getting stale. So we kind of turned it around to where we just shoot from the hip and go unscripted. Unfortunately for that, Ro didn't have a script to read. But fortunately for Sweetie what? we didn't have to do new scripts anymore. So, yay. Much easier <laughs> test on our shoulders. Oh, uh, yeah, I remember. Um, there was, Ro had his own news time. He was like, proper news, uh, the report sort of thing. <laughs> and, um, if I do remember correctly, the first episode that I do remember Ro on was, uh, 118, which is, way back and he's still with the crew so is uh, James who was um somewhat uh, he joined the show in like 70 something episode because he was guest on that uh, on that episode it's it's really great to uh, to see uh the show progress and um and seeing all of these faces becoming actually the part of the show like I ha- apparently have, because I'm I'm terrible at <laughs> hijacking the show. Oh god! So let's talk about me. <laughs> nah. Hey, it's cool. It's cool. I mean, you gave a contribution to the show with your arts and so on. So you did good. You did good. Ha! <laughs> Yay! Um, I do know another show, which this show is based on that show. And both of these shows have been progressing so much in in a long time span, and um, that show is My Little Pony. Mm. And I do believe Hasbro has some interesting stuff going on uh, with the show and something uh, related to it. Well, we're not talking about the show specifically, but more of the font they they use for Friendship is Magic. (laughs) Ah, boy. Yeah, I mean, this is quite an interesting situation. I mean, for those that haven't uh, perhaps uh, caught the news article yet, I mean, you'll find it in the show notes below, but basically a company called Font Brothers America have um, filed a suit against Hasbro and the My Little Pony brand because um, the font that they use for the um, Friendship is Magic and the kind of logo is allegedly copyrighted or trademarked by um, Font Brothers and the claim that Hasbro have been using the font for the last six years or so without permission, which, uh, is, you know, it, it can cause a bit of bother, let's put it that way. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Oh, wow. Here's the thing I need to address. The font that we are talking about is for Friendship is Magic, and this font originally was inspired by the opening title for Walt Disney's film The Parent Trap, the 1961 version. And said font is, well, up for sale on Font Brothers' website. But I don't know how, why, and 
honestly speaking, this should not have happened where Hasbro's getting sued for this. In all rationality, how and why? Well, the thing that always got me is the fact that, right, you know, regardless, right, let's say hypothetically that um, Hasbro have used this font illegally. Let's say hypothetically Devil Ass Advocate. Mm -hmm. This show has been around and the branding for it has been around for six, maybe seven years of it if they did pre-work beforehand. Because, you know, obviously when you're doing pre-production, it's been around, you know, for months to a year beforehand. Mm -hmm. How has it not been caught before now? Okay, but here's the interesting fact. Here's the interesting fact. Font Brothers knew about the font being used. And on their website, before the change, uh, they stated that uh, Generation B is one of the official fonts used in the TV series My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. So they acknowledged the font being used. So, okay, that's good. But here's why I ask, how was this not caught earlier on? And how was legal not informed? Because the font is something that you need to purchase and you need to get a license for. Um, here's an, uh, here's a, probably the best answer to going for it logically. Mm -hmm. They were waiting for the money. For who? Font Brothers? Yeah, that they, they were waiting, uh, they, they were seeing that they got more, much more successful with each year and they're like, yeah, uh, her, remember that this is our font? Yeah! Hmm, okay, well, it does bring an interesting fact where, okay, Font Brother may have increased the charge to them, but that's not fair in terms of how you do business because when you license out something, it's at a set price. Uh, price increase depends on state of the country's economical growth and whatnot, blah, blah, blah. That's all economics. I'm going to go there. But if two parties agree on a price, they agree on a price. If it's a one-time deal, then Hasbro should not be having any problems unless this is a reoccurring account where they need to pay every year. So I'm just going to double check it myself because this is interesting where if I can buy this and if I need to pay for, what you call this, pay for the font again for the next year, that's not fun. Also, do remember that we're not prof professionals and we probably don't know what we're speaking about. Yeah, I mean, it's quite, I mean, you know, we're so used to talking about topics about MLP that, and you know, usually it's quite frivolous stuff and you can have quite a lot of fun with it. We're basically talking about a legal case, which, you know, and as Puffy says, I mean, we have no actual legal knowledge as such. I mean, and it's also a bit hard to make this funny. <laughs> yeah, true. And we're not lawyers, by the way, so... Yeah. Okay, uh, I got Font Brothers up, and the font it costs nineteen dollars and ninety five cents. Twenty dollars, really? Yes. Uh huh. Okay, but here's the thing: what license is it using? Oh, okay, this is interesting. It says for one to five users, but Hasbro is a corporation, huh? Yeah, a uh, uh, corporate deals will be slightly separate. I mean, that's for like um. Uh, used by maybe um, per, you know personal users or at best sort of small businesses. If it's corporate, it'll be a slight, slightly different deal that they get, just to get on the basis that they can afford to pay more. True, and you know, true. and and fonts are you know pretty serious business. And you know, which I know, I know it sounds kind of daft when you say like, how can a font be something that could uh, potentially cause a lot of problems? But if you think about it, the work that goes into designing a particular font, you know, to get all the letters right, to get the vectors behind it sorted out, the colours, the scripting, so on, you know, there's a lot of work to be put into that. And uh, if it's something that you're charging for and it is actually yours and it is copyrighted and it turns out someone's nicked it or, you know, licenses haven't been paid or whatever the, the issue is, it's understandable that you might be a bit miffed. But the thing that always gets me is, like, it was on their website, uh, the Font Brothers website, that the um, MLP used this style font. So they obviously knew that it was either theirs or inspired by theirs or, you know, whatever it is. You know, how could it get to the point where five or six years in, after the show's been made, they've gone, hang on a second, we know this font's ours, we know they've used it, and now we're, you know, we've ended up in this sort of strange legal situation. Yeah, so that's the part where things are getting more confusing on all ends. Like, how is this, how is this happening? Just the thing. 
Yeah, I mean, from what I, from what I can gather from the news article, they're saying that the proper licenses weren't purchased. But at the same time, if the license wasn't purchased, right? Okay, and you know, if accounting strips happen. That is a thing. So why then go to court? Why not just say, look, listen, we might up the licenses. Can we sort this out? Here's the thing, Kyle. Let's just say this. Let's just say hypothetically that MLP has what been running over six years now, or oh, going oh, yeah. on to six years. Let's just say that, okay, uh, the contract ended on year three because, well, supposedly they were only to have three seasons. So contract ended on season three. So once they renewed the contract to carry on for another three more seasons, they forgot to update the font, probably. All right. That, that could be a theory yeah, there. A oh, yeah. So that could be a theory there, but I'm not saying that it's true, but... It's one worth looking at, probably. I'm not sure. Oh, definitely. I mean, once again, it just goes back to that thing that we're not the legal people and we don't kind of really know the ins and outs. I mean, it's... And it is a hard topic to talk about. I mean, you can kind of hypothesize what you think might happen. But um, I don't know what to say. To be honest, the best thing to do right now is just to look at how the situation is going to go and... um, if if they actually do say in detail what what the hell happened and um, yeah I I think looking at the actual things that happened is going to help us a lot more than theorizing. Yeah, but still we're not in the know, so we got really no idea how things are going. But this is interesting, though. I bet someone is going to go like okay, we have our, our theories on what's going to happen, and we're like. That is, th- let's turn this into a sh- theory show for like th- 30 minutes. No. Um, and in the end, someone's going to look at what actually happened and they're going to go, you've ruined my head cannon. <laughs> oh, wow. Legal head cannon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Nah, nah. But still, at least this is something where, hey, it's interesting for us to know. And, uh, if you just go on the interwebs, there's fan version of the font, and it's called Celestial Celestial's um, Redux. So there's that too. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so you can have a fan version of the font. I'm not 100% sure if it's a direct copy or a modified version, but still, it's a fan version, and just look for it. So you could say it's not my, my little pony, it's my little phony. <laughs> oh, no, no. oh, come on, that that I'm so proud of myself. I just that saw that just in my head. Painful, it's like yes, yes. painful indeed. I, yeah. But, yeah, that was a painful pun. Mm-hmm. Oh, but I, come on, I, I, a bit... I pretty much forgot that you you do puns. I I completely <laughs> forgot. What I really hate is the fact that I'm good at puns when I don't expect to do them. <laughs> like I did one earlier on as well uh, when I was at a board game this afternoon and it's like, why do I come up with the good ones when I don't need to? It's like, I, 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 like I've yeah. been trying to work on a wee pun uh, article thing and couldn't think of any. All rubbish. But like, if I'm left but to my own devices, I'll find them. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. I uh, I actually have the same thing, and my and my friends literally hate of how amazingly bad the poems I make are. But anyway, there was the news, and I love to go to this one because it's my favorite time ever. It is the emails. Ooh, emails! Yes, yes. We need some sort of daft jingle or something for this. Like, for nah, we don't need session. to. We don't need to because. Uh, well, we like the emails, but people don't really want to send us any because probably they're shy. Uh, well, still, what's still, uh, this one comes from CRC Brody, and he asks, what do you think Fluttershy's brother will be like? Something really, wait, she has a brother? <laughs> <laughs> well, not sure, because this could be one of those derps on the 4chan board, because uh, there was an episode description saying that Fluttershy had a brother, but that was the Brotherhood Social episode, but nope, it was not that one. And someone asked Jason Thiessen if uh, we will ever see Fluttershy's brother. He says, maybe. Huh. Um, so my opinion of it, 
He's gonna be really, really, really hot, and he's gonna be like the opposite of Prince Blue Blood. So basically, he's gonna be like the the, the, the dream of the, the dreams and stuff. You know, there's a comic about that. Yeah, I know. I do know Norm. <laughs> oh, yeah, there was a comic. Yeah, there was a comic. Uh... Hang on, have I missed an inside joke here? No, like, no. There's... Um, no it's, it's it... an actual comic that we're going to leave in the, 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 the thingy if thing I down below. If I can find it, if I can find it. Just... I'll find it for you if you can't right, find right. it. But Kyle, what about you, man? What, what do you think? Uh, well, I mean, what I think is that, I mean, the obvious thing you would expect from a comedy perspective is for her brother, if he does appear, to be entirely opposite to her. On the basis that it's funny, because it's the same thing to do with um, was it, was it? Oh, I'm trying Maud to remember who it was. Was, was it Pinkie Pie's sister? Yeah, Maud. Yeah, Maud. Uh, and I, there was a complete, you know, and it was kind of played for humor the fact that they were, you know, completely separate and they kind of did character development along the way. But actually, I like the idea of Fluttershy's brother being basically the same as her in many respects, just because I reckon it'd be quite interesting. You know, just the fact that you can see them both fawning over animals and kind of going like, you know. Oh, look at the cute little bunny. Yay. <laughs> Honestly, for me, I want to have Fluttershy's brother to be the exact opposite of her. Because, well, it's much more fun and outgoing and stuff. But when you mentioned mod, hey, they've done that formula before. So what's new that they could bring to the board? And yeah, make it the exact same as her. Where he's shy and... um. Just shy and very timid. That could work. I don't know. I mean, personally, I want to go for the route where he's the total opposite. Outgoing, um, daring, and just fun. The total opposite of her. Guys, I just realized something. Okay. Uh, so on, um, I, I don't know if they are still a thing. I think they are. But first of all, I'm going to give a bit of a backstory right how i got this idea um so you you know fluttershy's name is fluttershy so what could her brother be called flutter guy and then i was like hmm i've heard that name before um and uh, those you know cutie art crusaders um not cutie mark but cutie art crusaders they are another podcast about art and everything related to it and uh, there is a person on that show called Flurry Guy. And, um, yeah, I think we've already met the Fluttershy's brother. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Probably. So shout out to Cutie Art Crusaders. Yay. <laughs> All right, then. So the next question is, do you think Twilight will get the message that some life problems can't be solved by books? Probably not. No. No, I it was never. A, yeah. It would take her a while, I think, if, if that were to happen. I mean, um, it would be interesting to see it happen, you know, in terms of... Because uh, then, would that have a big change towards the character in terms of, like, what she would do next? Or, oof, the possibilities. Funny enough, uh, there's an episode about that. I the, oh. the, Yeah, the episode is called The Who Feels Was Just McCult. Oh, okay, oh yeah. yeah. I, oh. Yeah. Doop buddy, doop, 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 it just, doop buddy, doop. <laughs> it just hit me there when I was thinking about it. And yeah, Twilight used books or kind of, yeah, Twilight used books for, to try to, and solve that problem where that problem was not solvable by books because of how the Hoofiers and cults are. They didn't want to, well, let's just say they're big meanies. And the only way to solve that problem was to hear it from another point of view, which was the animals, and that's where Fluttershy came in. But there's another whole episode review. It's on the site. You can listen to it. Please tell me you didn't spoil the episode for Kyle. No. No, I no. Didn't. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, Kyle hasn't seen all of the episodes. Norman. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't worry. I'm... I am a protected child. I'm safe. Okay, the third question is, how is Canterlot High connected to Equestria in, in more ways than we know? Hmm. You're making me go through my theory head. 
which is basically just the Discord theory. <laughs> on, What's that? Um, it, I I have a theory on my blog spot, which was about um, which actually actually you know the episode that pretty much no one likes, which was what about Discord? Uh huh. It, it, it confirmed. It kind of confirmed it a lot, lot more. Um, and uh, the theory came from the season four, episode eleven, uh, "Three is a Crowd," um, mm-hmm. where I literally just went on on how, uh, how, what were Discord's motives and why did he do that and stuff. Basically, the the simple answer was friendship. Friendship. That's it. Yeah. All right. If so... you want to read it, go to my blog spot, which I will never update ever. Uh, hopefully, I, 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 hopefully I will, because I do want to write. But um, about Cantalot High, Cantalot High is like the 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 place of the portal, which is weird because the portal was uh, moved from um uh, is. Technically, in the movie, it's in the Equestry, not Equestry Girl, but, um, God damn it, what was it called? Crystal, Crystal Empire? Yeah, Crystal, uh, in the Crystal Castle of the Crystal Empire, mm-hmm. which is definitely not, which is technically Crystal High. It's no, not don't, a lot high. Don't overthink it like that. Don't overthink no, no, it no, like no, 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 no. There is an explanation about it because, uh, I, if I do remember correctly, um, Celestia did say that um, they moved the portal, or, so, or, or there was something that they moved the portal. And technically, since it it's can't a lot high, then technically at first it was found in can't uh, in can't a lot in the can't a lot castle. Then there you go. I no. you don't want me to start ranting. Please no. save you're yourself. Just, <laughs> technically, you're just making yourself confused. Um, no, this, I'm this... not. It, it makes sense. It makes sense. It's not like really. if you made a chart. No, no, no. If you made a chart, it's it's like uh, let's take four uh, locations, right? Mm-hmm. Which is Cantalot, Cantalot yeah. High, and Crystal Empire and Crystal Prep. Yeah, that's the, that's the name. Um, the portal in the Equestria Girls. It's in Cantalot High. But in uh, in Pony World, it is uh, it was moved from Cantalot to Crystal Empire, and that is why the portal is, uh, and that shows the it, it, the origins in it where the portal was basically found. And no, the portal was found in Cantalot Castle. It was moved to Crystal Empire for Cadence to take care of, and it was That's moved. What I said. <laughs> But no, Puff, it was moved to Twilight's Castle in Ponyville. Later on. Yes. Later on. And I completely forgot about that. (laughs) (laughs) But suddenly she made it permanently open by the the magic of the book. Why aren't books that cool in real life? (laughs) I know. Uh, Okay, what's your theory? My theory on... I'm, I've got to be honest, I'm not entirely sure if I have a particular theory on this, I'm afraid. Um, just because literally it hasn't ever really crossed my mind that much. Which is a very boring answer to give, and I can only apologise for the banality of that. Eh, but... cool. <laughs> no, not many people like the Cantalot High or Equestria Girls team. I, for one, do. And the way I look at the Equestria Girls universe and Equestria itself is a mirror universe, except Things work more like how we are right now with computers and technology while Pony have magic. I'm guessing something on our end developed and yeah. Just think of Equestria Girls Universe as our own universe. We have technology, phones, YouTubes and whatnot while Ponyville doesn't have that. Yeah, but Norman, you're forgetting one thing. I have a wonderful question for you, which is... How did Equestria have taxis? Taxi is just a mode of transportation. It's just a pony pulling a cart and getting paid later on. Why, though? Why? How did they get the idea of taxis? I think, I think there is some kind of a connection there. It's fair. 
No, but really. What, what, transportation. Think about it. Th- think about it. Why do horses need transportation if they have their own legs and and stuff? Yeah, I understand that. Uh, yeah, they may get a cart and um, well, use mail and stuff. But the thing is, why would horses need transport? But Pop, you're forgetting the simple fact that they evolve, they have emotions, and they want to be comfortable. Oh, really? If you're telling me that, then how did they come to make typewriters? That one, I got no idea. There you go. <laughs> there must be like a, some kind of connection where they uh, they got information, uh, like someone went in and explored and the first exploration went Funny down. Funny enough that you mentioned that, there is a comic for it officially. Yeah, the first uh, miniseries comic. Oh no, this is the reflection art of the mainline comic. Uh, long story short, Starshore the Bearded and Celestia travel from universe to universe discovering things about other worlds and taking or borrowing some of their technologies or whatever it is that they got and brought it into their own universe. Yeah, but think if that dimension, like dimensions where they traveled is actually one dimension, just every, each time evolving. That could be the Equestria Girls world. My mind is just blown. Oh, wow. I love Zeros. Why don't I do this? <laughs> because people might call you a crazy person. <laughs> Thanks. I'm not saying other people might. Okay, yeah. Other people may find me crazy or they may find me very, very shy and, uh, and stuff, <laughs> like the, a person who literally can't talk to people. Because I think I gave off that impression to a, uh, a an English teacher who ha- who's literally a gamer and she p- has played Undertale. And so I drew my first Undertale fan art and literally gave it to her. What did she think? <laughs> she She was like... Oh my god, my day has been officially made. Holy crap. (laughs) Now you two shall be best friends forever. Uh, I doubt it. I I very much doubt it because you guys know me and I'm very sorry that you know me. (laughs) You must have determination. Oh my god. Oh my god, that's it. No, no, I'm never hijacking the show ever again, <laughs> nor ever coming on it. Oh my god, that, that was just horrible. Why do you do this to me, Norman? Oh my god. Oh, because we care. Oh my god. Oh uh, my god, I hate you. Oh. Alright, alright, alright. My brain, it hurts. Do you understand that? My brain hurts, <laughs> and I can't even express how much a noise and, and cringe and everything and how much my brain hurts. <laughs> Holy crap, Norman, oh my god. Oh. Uh, calm down, calm down. Anyway, Puff, you need to end the show. Uh, do you have the strength to do it? <laughs> wait, g- g- give, him, give him one more moment. All right. <laughs> oh my god. Thank you. So, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at the MBS Show at gmail.com. You can also reach us on Twitter at the MBS Show. Sweetiebot will tweet things. She probably is, is going to be like, Norman, what have you done? What have you done? <laughs> Honestly speaking, there was a couple of tweets, and I have to give a shout out to Sapphire Heart Song. She has been tweeting to the show and replying messages on the YouTubes, and she's an awesome girl to talk to. Oh, that's so cool. And she has her own YouTube review channel thingy, so go watch and subscribe. She's awesome. We're not sponsored. Sorry. (laughs) It's like, add here, spawn here, woo! Oh, talking about sponsorship, you guys should really go buy Emmy Larson's book, Penny Royal Academy, available on Amazon. And if you oh want to see my more god, podcast- you're making my brain, brain explode. I called my brain Bran. <laughs>
That's that's impressive. Oh. Your rates become brown and it's basically become cereal. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that is absolutely great. Uh, that's I'm so impressed. Is, so, so where can they find you, Norman? They can find me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And tickling my fancy this week is... Um, let's see. Uh, I got no idea. Probably the retweets from this show. <laughs> uh, I could make such a rude joke about that, but let's keep it PG. So, Cal, where, where can they find you? Well, you can find me at facebook.com forward slash Kyle McCall. That's where you'll find all the writing stuff that I'm doing and the stuff, the shows that I record here, MBS and Creative Vibes. And Creative Vibes, uh, Midnight Scribes Creative Vibes, actually. You can find on uh, the Helm Bronies YouTube channel and we're on our, where our fourth, ep- fourth episode is going to be out on this Tuesday. So we've got some great guests lined up for that. And uh, believe it or not, you can also, if you are so inclined and if I can be so inclined as to actually be bothered to do it but I can also you can also find me on Picarto at Midnight Scribe because I actually am now investigating the world of live streaming in this mysterious new place what is this place so <laughs> I don't know I don't know I've only heard rumours like very intriguing things like da, 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 da. anyway Puff where can they catch you don't steal my show it's what? mine now it, it's mine now getting shoe Shoo, go off. <laughs> um, but this, uh, I actually have a stupid question. Because yes. my bran is apparently <laughs> tired and someone is messing with my bran. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so you can find me at DeviantArt, Perfect Smart Star DeviantArt.com, where I basically draw and put my art up there. Because apparently I also do that when I, I'm not hijacking the show. <laughs> for the second time in a week, dang. No, in a month. In in a month, it, and that and that's pretty much um, four episodes. Um, so two of them I've hijacked already. That's Thanks. impressive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Achievement <I'm glad>. unlocked. <laughs> Um, you can also find me on picasso.tv slash buffysmosh where I, I stream my art and I'm being weird. Believe me, there are people there and we make horrible jokes and just have fun with it. We're winging it like I am doing with the, with the, the with the host of the being of this. Do you see how my brand is really tired, Norman? It's your fault. <laughs> um, oh and also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebooks. It's going to be the, the, the spreadsheet, not spreadsheet, but the thingy thing down below. Go check it out. You can yeah, also it's... catch us on PonyWorldLive.com. And I am tired. <laughs> well, let me take over the captain position again. So... Oh, just please let me, <clears throat> let me at least have the captain hat. Please. All right, okay, you can have the captain hat, but I'm going to take the captain position. So anyway, uh, this has been episode 200. Uh, it's nothing big, nothing fancy like what we did for episode 100, but still, this is one of those episodes where I'm proud of. We have friends, we got what a good do you conversation. Mean? fancy. I'm fancy. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I like to say thank you to all the listeners who have been listening for us for over 200 episodes plus the review shows and thank you so much for sticking with us because without you well probably i'll do this but (laughs) i'll do it on a monthly basis not weekly but still uh thank you so much for supporting us and commenting on the episode it really means a lot to me and i read all of your comments anyway where's the confetti where's the where's the wacky string (laughs) I don't think Kyle want to mess up his screen anymore. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, um, I would like to say thank you, and we'll catch you guys next week with another amazing episode of the MBS Show. I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been Kyle McCall. And I'm never doing this again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I beg to differ. And we'll catch you guys next week. Bye bye. Bye bye.
I, I I actually have the same thing, and my and my friends literally hate from uh, of how amazingly bad the puns I make are. Here's here's going to be a small Christmas story, right? So, me and my friend uh, Martha, we went to a store, um, and there was toilet paper with Christmas trees on them. And uh, I made a pun. It's going to be make mature language and stuff. Just warning. Well, we're going to have a... That's not a word! ...load of Christmas. Wait, wait. And then uh, and then we went out of the store. And, uh, and I was like, wow, my puns really stink. And I was not expecting to make a pun. I didn't even want to make a pun. I was just making a statement, and I made a pun. Oh, listen, those are the best ones. The best puns are the ones that you say, and then you have that three-second delay, and then you realize you've done it. It's been, yeah. And actually, by the way, doubly better if someone else notices before you, <laughs> which is just even better, because you get the whole extra element of being entirely innocent. Right. Of, yeah. You know. It was just crappy. <laughs> Oh my Duh. god. <laughs> I can do um, it too. Wait, I'm sorry. I, I think I need to, I need to grab my scissors. You really need to cut it out, Norman. <laughs> we, we, are, what, are you going to cut them out of the show? Yeah. Oops. Very much. <laughs> we'll see. Oh. We'll see. <clears throat> um, I forgot the last lines. Uh, Check out the show notes. It's under contact us. <clears throat> it's like getting on my uh, reading voice, which is really, really bad. <laughs> uh, do you read this every day, or, or or do you memorize this? No, I read this every day. I somehow memorize it, but I like to read it. Gee, gee, just uh, you, you can you can edit this out if you want. Um, but Kyle, did I do art for this week's episode? By this week's, do you mean episode three or episode four? Which episode is this? That's the thing. Well, That's why I'm asking. Well, right. <laughs> well, right. Well, here's the thing. We're recording this right now on the Saturday, so episode three is the last one up. But by the time this episode is up, it'll be episode four. Yeah, I mean, when the episode is up. Uh, yeah. I have no idea. Not I don't know anything about funny. the art team. I have no idea. <laughs> I never get told anything about the art team. Sugar Dove never tells me these things. Yeah, but who's? Know. Yeah, but but what is? Who, who's is the guest? The episode, is uh, is it going to be episode four? It'll be episode four, yes. And uh, it's my heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh for goodness' sake! <laughs> uh, this is going straight to the blooper section. Ooh, bloopers are back, baby! Yeah, <laughs> like a boss. Okay. Oh, sorry, Rum is not here. <clears throat> Anyway, both. Uh, you can also find the, the show. Uh, derp, pretty derp, derp, I didn't read. <laughs> <clears throat> Straight to delete section. Yay. <laughs> <clears throat> and also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes. Uh, iTunes. Yeah, yeah, shit. This is more difficult than I thought. <clears throat> Just raising, raising iTunes. Wow. I blame you, Norman. What did I do? You made my brain hurt. I'm sorry. 